What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Atrox here, and we're here with another video. So today we're gonna be doing Ren's Eden song. Um, this is actually a longer song. It's almost nine minutes long. So I'm very interested in seeing how this is gonna sound. I'm probably not gonna talk too too much in this one unless like there's a part in it that like you know I can share my experience with. But um, I'm not gonna take too long with this intro just because this video is like super long. But let me know what you guys think about the song in the comments below. If you guys want to see any other Ren songs, um, just leave a comment below on which Ren song you guys would like to see me react to. Uh, other than that, I'm just going to keep picking these Ren songs out of random and just seeing, like, you know, which one's which. But if there's any, like, specific order you guys want to see, just, like, leave it in the comments below and I'll put it into, and I'll add it to the list. And um, I definitely see you guys in comments. I kind of haven't had a chance to really uh, reply back to comments just because... I was super busy with um my my two jobs, so it was very hard to get to 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 comments when I get time to relax. But um, I do see them. I'm gonna re once I get some free time, I'm gonna start replying back to everybody that's been commenting on all the videos. But thank you guys for showing support to the channel, and um, I hope you guys keep enjoying the content. Well, either way, guys, if you guys like the video, leave a like, comment, uh, let me know you guys thoughts on the song, and uh, I guess we'll just jump into it. Also, sub if you're new to the channel. And we have all we constantly talk about run. Uh, at least we I try to do a video for each of these artists like at least once a week. But you know it was hard to do it while I was um working two jobs for the last two weeks. So we're gonna get back into doing uh, what we normally do. Let me tell you a story as old as time. The story of Adam and Eve. It starts with a god who wanted more. God had just created the heavens and the earth. He had the angels by his side, but they had no will of their own. And so the autonomy to love or reject him was never theirs. All but for one. The once called bringer of light. Mm. We'll Lucifer, morning star. Lucifer was the fairest and most intelligent of all the angels. He was the closest thing to God's image. And in his likeliness, Lucifer felt restless. He began to question and doubt God. He doubted the hierarchy opposed upon him. He felt God was arrogant. In his frustration, Lucifer built a throne that stood even above God's and declared mutiny. A war ensued. God being all powerful came out the victor and banished Lucifer from the heavens and exiled him to earth. Once again, God was alone with his power, perhaps from loneliness, Perhaps from curiosity, perhaps from a desire to share love, God began to work on his greatest project yet, a being that would mirror himself, the human, two humans specifically, Adam and Eve. They were placed inside a paradise built for them on earth, the Garden of Eden. In the garden, God placed a tree that bared fruit that would grant anyone who ate it powers bestowed only to a God to tell good from evil, left from right, to live righteously or to sin. He named this the tree of knowledge. God told Adam and Eve they could eat whatever they wanted in the garden, but never the fruit from the tree of knowledge. And if they disobeyed him, it would be punishable by death. The basic way the story of Eden is told is that Eve was tempted by Lucifer in the form of a serpent to eat a fruit from the tree of knowledge. Convinced, she bit the fruit, she passed it to Adam and he did the same. Suddenly, ultimate knowledge filled their minds and they realized they were naked and felt shame. God discovered this betrayal and felt anger. He exiled Adam and Eve and cursed them with the life of a mortal. They would work, they would bear children, and they would die. The fate of a human. I'm gonna be honest, like, you know, coming from like a religious point of view, uh, it's kind of like messed up to have like... <laughs> <laughs> to, to put a tree and tell people not to eat it because when you tell someone not to do something they do it like it almost feels like god wanted them to eat the apple but didn't want to say to eat the apple you know what i mean like and like uh, i'm not a super religious person but like you know i remember back when i was a kid going to school and like the 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 classes where they would just talk about this i always had that question it's like well if you didn't want them to eat the apple why would you put it there like the tree there, like a Pacific, and like let them know where it's at. And when you tell somebody not to do something, they they're gonna do it, especially if you have no free will. Like, um, I mean, I should say when they have free will, they they'll do it. Like, I don't know. It's to me, it's just a weird little thing because like, when you tell someone to do something, they're gonna do it. Like, 
I don't know, bro. Like, it, it, I always just found it weird that they had, like, that, that that was, like, something specifically said. You can eat everything else from here but this. This you are not allowed to touch. You are not allowed to eat. And for the tree of knowledge. And then, like, you guess that somehow Lucifer came into the into the Garden of Eden without God knowing, which makes no sense to me. But, um, because especially, like, when you consider, like, God is portrayed as this almond omnipotent uh, being that knows everything is everywhere you would think that he would be able to sense lucifer's presence in some way or form but instead he doesn't find it doesn't find out lucifer was there and then you know lucifer ends up tricking eden um eve into like eating the apple and then uh, what you call it? adam just like okay well if you don't know let me do it like type of shit you know what i mean like just weird they would bear children and they would die. The fate of a human. Now look deeper. In the story, the serpent tempted me by telling me I would gain ultimate knowledge and that God would spare me. Both were true. This wasn't some great deception, meaning that Satan, in the likeliness of God, perhaps understood his intentions. In fact, the only lie uttered in the Garden of Eden was by God who did not end up condemning Adam and Eve to death. Mm. This could be seen as an act of mercy, but the sheer fact that the tree existed and that humans were initially cut off from this knowledge may imply some part of God was afraid that if humans were granted the gift of perception, they, like Lucifer, would, would have, have the, the power, power to reject him too. The fact that there stood a beautiful tree that could grant this knowledge in the first place implies that a small part of God supposedly all-knowing perhaps wanted and intended the humans to bite too in the bible satan was an exiled angel of free will humans are exiled descendants See, that's, what I'm, I'm, that's what, kind of like what i was saying though like why would you put this tree of knowledge there's like a part of me that believes that god wanted them to eat the apple you know what i mean because like you know they, he wanted them to get their own perception of will and everything like that like just based by the story because otherwise like why would you plant a tree and then tell people not to eat from that tree and that say that you're gonna exile them or well, not exile but you're you they'll be punishable by death and then once they finally eat the 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 fruit from the tree you don't kill them but you instead banish them from the garden of eden which in itself is like it's it's, it's, a, it's a weird little thing that they have in the bible like i don't know like i've always questioned that kind of thing and i always just thought it was weird it's like well have a tree there that you didn't want them to actually eat from and like like i said i'm not like a super religious person anymore but went back when i was a kid i used to believe like heavily in god and all that and like it's just something i always questioned growing up because it seems like a little contra uh kind of productive to, to put something in there and then tell someone not to eat from that tree like especially if you give them free will because like no I, I assume they already have free will because like the tree was for knowledge. It ch changed the perception of, like, how they see things. Because, like, they had free will, but they didn't realize they were naked until they ate, the f they ate the fruit, you know what I mean? So, I don't know, like... Satan was an exiled angel of free will. Humans are exiled descendants of Adam and Eve. Also with free will. Not oh, only have we shared a similar fate, fate to the devil, devil, we were also both constructed we in the image of our creator. constructed in the image of our creator. Meaning our behaviors, in some shape or form, imperfectly echo his. We could assume that this kind of God has his doubts, but as the most powerful being in the universe, he has no one above him to turn to with questions, and no one to doubt but himself, an incredibly lonely and isolating existence. We must only assume that the common thread between God, Lucifer, and us is the desire for more, an eternal curiosity, a desire perhaps birthed from a seed of loneliness. If not, why would we exist in the first place? The constantly looping bittersweet irony is where the gifted by some... I just kind of like, yeah, I mean... I mean, it's not wrong. Imagine being like in this moment, like this being with like an immense amount of power and nothing to share it with. No, nobody above you, nobody below you, nobody next to you. It's just you, and like obviously, like you would create, you would crave like companionship. No one likes being alone. So like, especially us humans, humans we crave companionship, whether it be with friends, whether it be with a uh, lover. Um, family. It just it doesn't really matter. Like 
we just crave companionship. And obviously, like, you know, if there is a God, and, like, if there is, like, that, you would assume it would be the same way for him, or her, or it, or it. like, I'm not exactly sure how to to really talk about the, uh, this, um, uh, this being. Like, you would think that the being would, like, want companionship, you know what I mean? Like, so, like, I definitely, I could see, I could see the right, Ren's right point on this, on this point of view. And how, like, we echo him. The constantly looping bittersweet irony is whether gifted by some omnipotent god or simply a byproduct of billions of years of evolution, here we stand in 2023 as creatures with free will, the only creatures that understand and define good from bad, creatures with the potential of a god. And what do we do? With that free will, my friends, we willingly walk to the edge of a cliff. In the name of progress, we jump off the precipice. The empires we build ravage the earth. The natural order of things are necessary to survive. Any systems which do not honor homeostasis eventually perish. Our free will overrides our own biological instinct. We can take more than we eat. We can kill more than we need. We can willingly create weapons with the potential to burn everything we've built to the ground. We willingly decide to bow at the altar of greed, the most insidious and destructive of all sins. We put our faith in corporations who pose as rulers. We willingly allow ourselves to be led by outdated power systems, ran by corrupted politicians and bloated dictators who claim domain and dominion over an open I'm free now. We will Dude, he is so right, bro. I'm gonna be honest, like, greed is definitely the most destructive out of all the sins. Just considering, like, what greed entails, like, greed is, like, one of those things where, like, you never have enough. You know what I mean? Like, if you think about it, like, a lot of, like, wars and stuff like that, it's just about greed, money, profits, all that stuff. Like, it, uh, it's... It's definitely true, like, uh, greed is definitely, like, what holds everyone back, and, like, we destroy our own people, we destroy our own buildings and stuff like that, and, like, destroy, like, different country stuff, even though everybody's, like, a human, like, uh... Power systems ran by corrupted politicians and bloated dictators who claim domain and dominion over an open and free land. We willingly elect the corrupted when the decision was always ours to build something better. We willingly create and impose separation. Especially with these older systems, like, you got systems that were, like, made in place, like, hundreds of years ago. Like, okay, let's talk about, like, one one specific system I've always had a problem with is that like, the work system, right? And like I think Bernie Sanders talked about this was, like a, a few weeks ago, where like he feels like, you know, the the current work system five days a week should not apply in the same way that it applied back in the nineteen forties, just because um, I think it was like either nineteen twenties or nineteen forties. I'm not I'm not specific. I don't remember exactly when it was when they created the like the work system five days a week, forty hours when, like. We've progressed so far past that point, like in terms of technology and this AI stuff and everything. Like, there's no need for us to still work five days a week. You know what I mean? Like, we could st we could work less hours and like just have AI stuff take over control of like the rest of the stuff we don't do, or just like change it in general. Like, cause like people work for you know, people work five days a week. They spend more time at work than they do with their own family and their own like loved ones. Like, yeah, people. Who, people's kids being raised by cartoons and video games versus, like, parents being in the home, you know what I mean? So, like, I definitely get, like, Bernie's point of view on that matter. Like, I, I always, this is something that I thought, like, needs to be reevaluated. Like, it's the, but it's hard to do that when you got so many, like, 80, 90-year-old, like, freaking people who are so out of touch with reality. Like, they're just upholding their same laws and traditions. Like, that's basically what they do. They don't... Like, especially like with the TikTok ban and all that stuff, like, you know, they didn't even budge at all about that. Like, I personally, I'm not that big of a fan of TikTok, but, you know, at the end of the day, like, this is kind of like the old, like, kind of mindset. Just immediately it's like, nah, fuck that. Because, like, you know, TikTok also shows, like, a lot of, like, stuff that um American, like, uh, news 
doesn't show because like obviously he's regulated and all that stuff um so that's my opinion i think that's why they really want to like they really ban tiktok but anyways that's nothing to do with this video i'm just saying like in terms of like you know like just the, the corrupt systems and stuff like that claim domain and dominion over an open and free land we willingly elect the corrupted when the decision was always ours to build something better we willingly create and impose separation because of beliefs that we are force fed through our phones and television sets we always had the will to reject these things but we adhere to them as though they were the laws of physics war famine Pestilence, greed, these aren't things imposed upon us by an all-powerful God or by his demonic adversary. They are here because of us, not because of free will, but because of our inability to use it. We must be motivated to be better, not out of fear of punishment of an eternal damnation, but because the choice exists, because we love ourselves, because we have the power to absolve ourselves of so much unnecessary suffering. I'm gonna be honest, like he has a he's 100% right on this regard because, like, if you think about it, like, okay, take religion out of it, right? Take religion out of all government and just like talk about, um, talk about the way the government functions as a whole. If the if people if the government wasn't so focused on like controlling everything, there'd be more, there's more than enough resources on the planet to keep everyone fed without like anyone starving to death or having any homeless people, like each government kind of polices a certain territory and like kind of you know implies their own like rules and regulations to everything and they control that because you know that's how they make their money and how they make their profits but there's more than enough land more enough food more than enough everything for everyone to be living comfortably and like you know people that put religion behind this is the reason why it's not it's kind of crazy to me because you know it's just way too much resources on this planet like if we just stop having wars and all that and just focused on like important things like feeding everyone and just being a good person in general then like you know everyone could be fed everyone could like be comfortable with the way they live you know but that's probably never gonna happen just simply because like each government like they just every every government is corrupt in the, in the, in the world in, in some way or form so like, unless somehow, like, all these corrupted officials get pushed out of the government and then, like, somebody who actually cares about, like, his fellow man and, fellow and like, just fellow people. Like, that's the only way I can see, the, like, something like that actually ever changing. But, you know, it is what it is. This is how, like, life is, I guess. Take a second to be in this very moment. In this moment, to be in this very punishment of an eternal damnation. But because the choice exists because we love ourselves, because we have the power to absolve ourselves of so much unnecessary suffering. Take a second to be in this very moment. In this moment, how much suffering is happening all over the planet right now? How many people are dying of illnesses that could have easily been cured, but aren't because of the selfishness and greediness of humanity? How many people break their backs and reject their own passions to simply afford bills and food? How many of us crave distraction from existence? How many of us numb that pain in whatever way necessary? How many children are being abused? How many people sleep cold and hungry on the streets? How many of us become cogs inside a machine that is destroying itself? How many soldiers have been forced to fight in meaningless wars how many humans have killed for ideals they don't believe in or understand how many people have died for the greed of another man and how much of this was avoidable as written in the bible satan was not condemned to hell satan was condemned to earth he lives there amongst other creatures with free will who always had the choice and still chose their own undoing ladies and gentlemen this is our self-made hell the bittersweet irony is this is a creation of our own design. I'll leave you with this. Consider what you have done here today. You have worked together as individuals collaborating to form a giant neural network, a hive mind capable of achieving incredible things. We have lent on each other's strengths to solve puzzles and decipher riddles, and we've done so to win money. Imagine applying that same spirit and determination to creating the closest thing we have to paradise here on earth. 
By using the power of collaboration, we can work together to even the playing field for everybody. Our dystopias can become utopias. Our jahannams can become jana. Our hells can become heaven right here on earth. And this sentiment applies to atheists, agnostics and believers alike. Myself, I'm an agnostic who believes. I believe in us. We must do better because we can choose to. We must be better simply because the option exists. Thank you. I won't lie, like, that was a very, like, that's a very strong video, just simply because, like, a lot of people are afraid to talk about politics, a lot of people are afraid to talk about religion, and honestly, I tend to steer away from those topics, like, unless, like, it's a song that we were talking about, and, uh, just, the general message of the song basically talking about, like, you know, if we put, the same energy we put into, like, you know, conquering and, what you call it, earning money and stuff like that, we, if we adapted that same message and put it towards, like, working together, like, Everybody could live in a in a pe more peaceful, more happier setting. We wouldn't have people that would probably drugged up and all that stuff. Because like a lot of people that use drugs or use video games, Netflix and stuff like that, it's really just coping with their life and using it as a, as a way to dumb down like whatever pain or like loneliness that they're feeling. And like by putting like that same effort into it, like you can, there could be a point where at some point in human history where everybody works together and it's like no wars but like even then like it's it's like an impossible thing because humans are greedy by nature like in order for us to really do that you'd have to eliminate greed you'd have to eliminate like that like kind of sin pretty much sin it's not it's probably not gonna happen but um <laughs> it's not impossible but at the same time like i'm gonna be honest uh it's a difficult thing because as far as like working together like maybe it will happen for a while but sin will always rise back and it'll just be the same thing over and over again like you know as long as sin is this in um, the human heart like you're never gonna really be able to work cohesively with each other like unless like it's your own people like obviously like you know that's why they like, have russians americans like we all work with our own people versus working with the whole world like in specific ways you know what i mean so like Sin, with sin being a thing, like, it can never really happen, honestly. Like, unless... I don't know, bro. I don't even know if it's a possibility, like, to be fair. To be fair. I know I'm kind of yapping right now, but at the same time, like, it's just a, it's a subject of the conversation with this video. It's like, if we put that same energy in and, like, are able to overcome our impulses of, like, sinning, greed, lust, you know, pride, all that, if we if there is a way that at some point we can overcome that, then sure, it's a possibility that we could work together and cure like diseases for people who can't afford it. Um, make sure everyone's hungry, gets fed, like you know stuff like that. But until we get to that point where humans can overcome their own like sins, probably not gonna happen. Really, I really like this video though. I'm not gonna lie. Like this is uh, I I love the topic of religion, especially like being like that. I'm not super religious, just to hear people's opinion on it. As long as the opinion is respectful and like you know, and just understanding other people's religion and not just blindly following, uh, not just blindly, it, blindly following and then like hating on people like that don't feel the same way you do. You know what I mean? Like as long as it's, like it opens, uh, like you know, an engaging important conversation between two different types of people where they can show off the, what they, how they feel and their own opinions. Like, I think, I think it's a cool, it's a cool thing. But anyways, guys, um, that's gonna do it for this video. This was a very interesting video from Ren. I really like the way that he uh, put together this video in terms of like just explaining, you know, how Adam and Eve came into being, how Lucifer fell, and then like ultimately what it had impactualized like for the humans and how like, you know, God didn't banish Lucifer to hell, but to, to earth. And, like, we made it our own hell instead of, like, you know, following a certain path which could help, like, you know, the rest of humanity. But until we get to that point where we overcome sin, it's not going to happen. But anyways, guys, let me know you guys thoughts in the comment section below. I appreciate you guys checking out this video and rocking with me. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.